Hardly. I believe we did. Minions, we're gonna steal Perfect the Moon! Hello everyone, this is your good old neighbor Nick Hicks, Spider-Verse, and Frozen 2, and Cam Possible Fan 2001. And due to the fourth Despicable Me movie is now in the movie and the local movie feeders, which everyone, if you're a huge fan of this franchise, and if you're not a huge fan of this franchise, just go ahead and support Women Nation by watching the movies. And I really hope Despicable um and I really hope uh, Despicable Me 4 will not cross a billion dollar by beating Inside Out 2 or else. You know how I feel about Inside Out 2 Fan 2001 reaction. He will be a such a crybaby. Oh my god. It can show that he cannot handle that at all. So hey guys, so today I am doing a redo review review of the one film who started it all for the Elimination Entertainment, which is another than the first Despicable Me movie. The one who started it all for this wonderful starting studio. Well, it's a mediocre studio, but you know I get my dress. Anyway, enough for the ado. Let's get this minion review started, shall we? It's review time! So, hey guys, when this film came out on July 9, a lot of the critics in the audience really enjoyed the heck, heck out of this movie because in the Watt Tomato system, they give this film like an 80% on Watt and Tomatoes, a uh, crudely fresh, and for the audience score, it got a 83% for the audience. Even I think the sequel is so much better than the first film, but I gotta be honest, but every time we watch this film, and more just got even better on the rewatch, honestly. Well, <laughs> well, not, um, <clears throat> not the animation. I will talk about the animation for this film in a minute. And so, hey guys, I gotta be honest here, but after I rewatched this film at my friend's house, though this film aged well after 14 years, and next year it's gonna be 15 years. Can you not believe this film is gonna turn 15 years old next year? Yeah, time to go fast, isn't it? And honestly, guys, you know what everyone said? Uh, time wasted, no one, huh? Bull crap. It could sweat out a bit. There was no rush. Quote by, uh, Dignite 1999 which is the one YouTuber that I actually enjoy, to be honest. So, hey, guys, so after I rewatched this film at my friend's house with Bub, I gotta say, this film does pretty age well after 14 years, but not animation. But anyway, enough of the do. Let's talk about so many good stuff about this film, and I will talk about the animation in a minute. I gotta be honest here, but this film will have the same review, just like the first Toy Story film. Just like the first Toy Story film. I really enjoyed the first Toy Story film, but the animation in that freaking movie, I absolutely did not like it. It was completely outdated as crap. After you pause the movies, when you was doing some stuff, and, he, sorry, and if you see a woody creepy face, you better get that woody creepy face out of my face. This is a Despicable Me review, not the Toy Story review. You get that out of my face right now. Thank you very much. I like Woody, but that creepy face when he rapping, I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you. Get out of my face. Thank you very much. But anyway, yeah, thank goodness this film does not have that. Does not have that. Thank goodness I do not want to wake up of the Woody creepy face in the first Toy Story film. Yeah, that is a... That's creepy. But anyway, let's talk about some positive first, and then I will talk about the negative. The story-wise, even I don't think the story is really original, but I gotta say, but you just here for a fun and entertaining family movie that kids and adults would absolutely enjoy. Honestly, guys, honestly, I don't understand why it's on some people will say that film is made for Kitty. I gotta be honest here, but that is total bull crap because this film has the sum of reference from, um from the film that came out in the 70s. Which is another than the one scene when Gru was sweeping the bed and he was moving the blanket and he saw a toy go ahead and a Gru go, ah! Guys, you know what that scene remind me of? That scene is remind me of the scene from The Godfather. Yeah, Revenation, you just seriously took in the scene from The Godfather? 
See? Animation is not just for kids. It can be a adult genre. You stupid, you stupid freaking thing, studio. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to stop doing that. But anyway, guys, I was completely shocking and very surprised that, it, sorry, that Elimination would do a reference to a Reddit all movie. Like, The Godfather is a freaking Reddit all movie. Do not watch that movie, kid. That film, that film will scar you for life. But I gotta be honest, but I absolutely happy. And that is honestly one of my favorite parts of the movie because I absolutely laugh my butt off when they reference The Godfather. And The Godfather is the best film of the 1970s. And I haven't seen the sequel, and I am not interested in watching the third film. But I, but I heard people say it's underrated, but I might check it out pretty soon, even I'm a huge fan of the Godfather trilogies. But I gotta be honest, but I, honestly, honestly, I don't have a, honestly, I don't have any problem about the story. Even I don't think this film have original story out there, but I gotta be honest, but you just here for a fun, a fun family film that kids and adults will really enjoy. This film is not just for kids, it's for adults too, because they have a win for, they have a win for The Godfather. Honestly guys, it can show that Women Nation can do a win for the World of Art movie, especially for the sequel. Yeah, that's my next review for that tomorrow, we'll see. But anyway, and honestly guys, and not just this film is a family film, this film is based on Will Weston. Because, let me tell you my story on this film. It was at D26, and my teacher named Mrs. McNutt showed me the scene from the first Despicable Me movie. And Paris really loved that movie. But I gotta be honest, but I definitely agree with Paris. Despicable Me 1 is such a classic, I absolutely love it the most. But... They have a real lesson when when you have your attitude and they have a real west a, a real lesson about it. Which I just wanna give a shout out for my teachers. I am so happy that they treat this film as a real lesson. Not just Oppenheimer have the history lesson, but even this film have a have a lesson that you cannot be rude, you could be a super bad, but you could be a super dad. Like, Gru was originally as a villain, he was trying to do a rocking ship, but not until, but not until he got to, he got to take care of the three gores, uh, I mean the three little gores, which, which, yeah, and Margo, Margo is my favorite out of the gores, and I don't have a question on her because she's widow. But anyway, and this film have a real lesson. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just get on, I'm sorry, on the guy, just get on some, <clears throat> Just get on some YouTube channel and I might you sent the link about it. I might text Mrs. McDuck that, that she can send me a link on that a Despicable Me lesson and I will show you to you guys on the comedian tab. And you know what I'm talking about. Because this film had one of the best lessons I have sorry I have ever seen for a Revelation film. Not even the Mario movie have a West I mean have a lesson. And I really hope Women Nation will continue doing that. Which I just wanna say thank you so much, Women Nation, for giving this film a real lesson. And this is a real lesson right there. Not just Oppenheimer by Universal have a real lesson about history, about atomic bomb, but this film have a I'm sorry, have a lesson that you cannot be rude and you cannot be self. Fish. So, so like I said, and the characters, I absolutely like every single character in this film. Well, what kind of for Vector? Even I think he is honestly one of the second leakers. Nah, 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 nah. I like Vector. Vector is a very fantastic villain. He's a really funny villain, especially for that one scene when he's saying, <laughs> oh my goodness, all the guy, especially for the scene when he's saying, oh, the key with a tiny toy, I got your tiny toy. And you see a tiny toy was brassing at Vector's face. He was back, <laughs> and he was back. Sorry, he was like, bad tiny toilet. Oh my goodness, that scene was completely funny. And I was sorry I was saturating on that part because it takes some time for my voice to get ready for that part. Oh my goodness, when he said, a uh, bad, sorry, uh, bad tiny toilet. Oh my goodness, I honestly, it can show that, that Jason Segel would not let us down with his comedy skills. Well, except the movie that came out in 2014, which is 10 years ago on the freaking July. And I don't want to say anymore. And I don't want to mention about it. And I am not showing a picture of it. You know what I'm talking about. It's a bad word. I should not be saying on the YouTube platform. But anyway, I don't want to be like last time when I review a, I'm sorry, a plain fire rescue. And I actually mentioned the title of the film. Which you know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about it. So let's move on. Anyway, guys. Let's talk about Gru himself. 
which is my second favorite performance I ever seen from Stephen Carell. My favorite performance by Stephen Carell, which is none than Michael Scott from The Office. Yeah, you, honestly, guy, do you remember that same guy that he was like, no, 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 the best meme I ever seen from The Office, and not just grew. Even the two, sorry, even the three girls was absolutely excellent characters. But my favorite, which is other than Margot, Margot is really, is really amazing, is really adorable, and she is such a cool character. She is such a cool character. And Adrian, Adrian is a really cute and adorable character. She is absolutely, she is absolutely adorable as a best, not in the pedophile way, as the best itself. And Eden. Eden, which is her right here, she's a wonderful character, and there was a one scene, I swear to God, not even this film have a reference to the Godfather. There was a scene when Gru saw Eden was entering of the sharp, uh, sharp needle, I mean sharp nail on that door, and Gru said, no, get out of that, and he, sorry, and when you see a juice filling everywhere and you act like it was blood and she was like oh my goodness you close the door in the juice box oh my goodness that was <laughs> see that scene was completely funny and i thought it was really sorry and i thought it was a blood for a second but no it was a juice okay first we got a reference to the godfather and now we got some blood reference man this film is definitely not a kid's film to be honest well <laughs> and on, 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 um, on the guy even this film is rated pg but you know i get my dress and dot number fario i don't want to talk about dot number fario because that is the same guy that he voiced by the same actor that he was in hop and that is the same person that he was causing trouble back in last show with the sexual insult yeah i don't want to talk about dot number fario and not even i'm going to talk about dot number fario at all because after what his actor did yeah you don't deserve a shout out i'm really sorry i like dr mafalio i really do but that honestly guys to be honest that is the same actor that he was doing a sexual insult back in last year i should not be saying on the youtube platform but but people need to hear this especially for the kids yeah yeah shame on you dr mafalio actor why would you do that to yourself you little piece of crap but anyway, and Gru's mother, that is the same actress that she was, oh, sorry, that she was in Mary Poppins and Shrek 2. Which is my, honestly guys, my favorite performance by her, which is another than her as Mary Poppins. And my second, which is another than her characters, um, her queen characters in Shrek 2. Which is my favorite, favorite movie out of the Shrek movie tied with the first film. And speak of the first film, I really, I'm very... I'm very disappointed of Netflix that they are going to remove that freaking movie on August 1st. Yeah, Netflix, you need to stop removing fan favorite. What the heck is wrong with you? Not just that, they're going to remove the uh, uh, the Matrix trilogies. Yeah, it can show that Netflix just don't even care about the fan. If they keep this up, I'm gonna, sorry, I might do an awareness of that. But not until they're going to screw up Cobra Kai Season 6 and Action Season 2. Yeah, we're gonna have a huge problem if you screw. I'm sorry, if you screw those two amazing show with those seasons. God darn it. Anyway, let's talk about the minions. Oh, the minion, 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 minions. Yup. At first, people like the minions, but nowadays, minion is freaking everywhere. Like minion shirt, minion pants, minion mug, minion toys, minion, minion pity bank, minion DVDs, minion pictures, minion drawing, minion me. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of minion. And not even the Elimination Entertainment would not have a wall go, but not until, sorry, but not until the Minion was saying, Elimination! Oh my goodness, that is annoying. At first, I just think it's really funny, but after I see the movie, like the Mario movie, the first Despicable, sorry, the first uh, Despicable Me 1 and 2, or even the same duology, or even uh, the Secret Rights of Pet duology, I keep seeing the Elimination logo and the Minion say, Elimination! Oh god, that thing that make my ears bleed. But anyway, guys, I was just saying that's a joke. And guys, I actually did not get my ears bleed after I hear the wall go by elimination to say the minion said, Elimination! Oh my goodness, stop saying elimination. You're making people ill hurt, you idiot. Anyway, guys, I was just making the joke. I was just not being mean for the minions. Like, if I be mean to the minion, when will I get a minion toy in the first place? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, guys, in the action scene, the action scene is absolutely incredible, especially for the climax. 
for the Despicable Me movie, this is hand down one of the second best climax I ever seen from this franchise. Um, uh, behind with the climax of the sequel, which I'm gonna talk about the sequel next, so stay tuned for that. I might post that video maybe tonight, which not just two videos, you're getting three videos in one day. But honestly, guys, I'm probably saying to yourself right now, do I have any flaws about this film? Have you not even seen the animation? Well, let's talk about the animation as my negative. I gotta be honest, but just like the Toy Story 1, this is hands down one of the second most outdated animation I ever seen from animation in general. Even I think it's even better than the first Toy Story 1 animation, but the animation of that is absolutely horrendous. Like honestly guys, after I rewatched this film, I couldn't believe the character design look like this. Look like this. That is even outdated just like every animation of the first Toy Story film. You can say whatever you want about the first Frozen 1 animation. At least, at least on the rewatch of the first Frozen movies. I mean the first Frozen movie. At least the animation of the first Frozen movie, it feel like, it feel like a non-outdated animation. If you watch the first Despicable Me movie, which just came out 14 years ago, and after you rewatch of uh, the first Toy Story film that came out in 20, I mean 23 years ago, on the guy, you can show that this film has some outdated animation. Those two films are both tied at the most outdated animation I ever seen in the animation for a genre. And that's the only flaws I could get for this film. And Vector. Vector is a really funny villain, especially when he do some Vector meat. I'm Vector! Oh yeah! Oh my goodness. Uh, Jason Segel, you deserve, you deserve a reward. Thank you so much for giving you a best performance as Vector. And you will be forever be as Vector. And I've heard that he's gonna be in the fourth film. Oops, spoiler alert. I'm very sorry, but I honestly don't give it on. Anyway, guys, and he was in a Despicable Me short, which is another than Moonis. Moonis is play front. I mean, play in front for migration. Seriously, you're forcing people to watch a short and you're watching the most mediocre elimination film, which is migration? Yeah, that's kind of petty right there. And there was a scene when Steve... I'm sorry, no, no, no. When Gru said, okay, my turn. And Gru just literally pull up his weapon weapon, and shoot at that alien, um, alien, um, alien game. And Gru said, not over. And an accent got her unicorn, I mean pony or unicorn, whatever call her, uh, call her. And she was like, it's so fluffy! Yeah, they play that. They played that part in the TV's file like so many freaking times. And there was a one scene when Gru was thinking out his plan. And he was like, I grab the moon. I sit on the toilet. Wait, what? Oh my goodness. I I love me some toilet joke in the animated movie. So, chasm. Anyway, guys, that was my, um, oh my goodness. I forgot a ending of the video. So overall, guys, Despicable Me 1 is a purpose thought to the elimination. Even I think the animation is completely outdated as crap, just like the first Toy Story film. I do not want to see an animated film that has some outdated animation. Please take, sorry, please take note. Please take note for the animation, the animation for Inside Out 2 and Frozen 2. And to be honest, I seriously thinking that Inside Out 2 will almost cause to be the best sequel ever. But I'm just going to be grateful for Frozen 2 as my best sequel ever. But Inside Out 2 came close. But honestly guys, this film is honestly one of my top 10 favorite film of 2010. Because even I think Tango is a much better animated film more than this film. And this film is 100 times better than... So, I mean, I gotta be honest, but this film is 100 times better than The Legend of the Guardians, the Arakahu. That Zack Snyder, even that film was the very first animated film by Zack Snyder's. But yeah, it just sticks to live action film. I might do a win on The Legend of the Guardian. I cannot believe, I cannot believe why I used to like that movie. But now, I just seriously thinking that it was... <laughs> 
Yawn. Yeah, that film was boring as crap. I would have watched this film instead of watching that crap. But anyway, on guy, not crap. I absolutely, um, I absolutely just didn't like it. Didn't even care about it. But on the guy, even I think Toy Story 3, Mega Mind, Strike Forever After, and most definitely Tango, especially for that beautiful Rapunzel. She is such a cutie. And, and I just think those animated films are much better than this film. But I gotta be honest, this film is 100 times better. 100 times better than The Legend of the Guardian, The Arrow of Who, and um, Ultimate and Mega. And I don't want to say any more. Anyway, guys, I'm going to give this Spiggle of Me one a 9 out of 10. I love it, and this film deserves a seal of Nick Kick awesomeness. Even I think the animation is outdated, but that that doesn't stop me to give this film a seal of Nick Kick awesomeness. So, hey, guys, that was my redo movie review of the one film who started it all for this mediocre uh, mediocre studio, which is another than Women Nation. So, you guys, so tell me what you thought on this film on the comment section below. I think it's good, think it's bad, think it's mediocre, think it's the best, think it's the worst. Comment below and let me know and stay tuned for my movie review, a redo movie review to one of the best films out of the, out, sorry, out of these franchise, which is another than Despicable Me 2, which is the very first Despicable Me movie I saw in the theater, and not just that, it's honestly one of my very first a very first Rumination film I ever saw in theaters. But not until Dr. Sister Warwick was my first, but I'm gonna count this. I'm gonna count this as my very first Rumination film I ever saw in theaters. Yeah, I seriously thinking that the Warwick, the Lorax was my very first, a very first Rumination film I ever saw in theaters. But now I'm just gonna say this film is my first ever Rumination film I ever saw in theaters. So tell me what is your favorite from this franchise. For me, I think the sequel is my favorite. So stay tuned for my redo movie review of the sequel. And stay tuned for my movie rant on the worst movie out of the franchise. Which is better than the third film. Oh boy, cannot wait to talk about that film. So casual. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more of this bunch of minion video, please, I highly recommend you hit the subscribe button and turn the notification. And share the video with your whole family. If you don't enjoy my video on me, I'm talking to you, Women Nation hater, you're gonna get freezed by a freeze ray. Freeze ray! Ha 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 ha! Anyway, guys, that was, oh, yeah, that was screwed. That was not me. That was screwed. So, people, don't trigger, don't trigger. Anyway, guys. I have no plan to rewatch this Spiggle Me 3 because I already rewatched that movie like two times. I think two times is good enough. Because I would have rewatched the first film and the sequel more than rewatching the third film. And I honestly do not care if people say, you gotta give that movie a chance. After I rewatched that movie, it just got even worse on the rewatch, honestly. And people, just don't, just don't make me liking the Spiggle Me 3. I'm a freaking movie critic, darn it. I can make I can make my own opinion for the third film. This is an American Don it. This is an American Don it. Sorry guys, so stay tuned for my redo movie review of the, the of uh Despicable Me 2 and stay tuned for my movie rant of uh Despicable Me 3 and after that I might watch Despicable Me 4 online honestly. So I just don't wanna wait until a digital I'm just gonna watch it online. Sorry guys, this is Nick Cake, Spider Verse and Frozen 2 and Kim Possible Fans of the one signing out and maybe do it one more time. Minions! We're going to stay on the moon!